agree to that we our position should be contingent on a referendum at the appropriate stage moving forward okay um, mr. Christie in recent times we had a change of government um, in the United Kingdom and um, the uh, people in the United Kingdom apparently they want to go for fixed terms um, in terms of political reform in this country shouldn't we be about advancing uh, political reform in the Bahamas if the British want to get away from certain uh, Westminster conventions and, and, and principles? Shouldn't the Bahamian people be ahead of that as well? There's absolutely no doubt that there ought to be a national conversation about political reform, but it has to be a conversation. It has to be done by the parties um, in our country, the political directorate of the country, which means FNM, PLP, and others, with a view to examining the, the existing um, situ situation, the existing Parliamentary Elections Act, for example, where the government and the speech from the throne indicated that it's going to change it. There needs to be electoral reform. We've heard the courts um, condemn the Parliamentary Registrar's Office for all sorts of defects and deficiencies. They need to be addressed so as to ensure we have free and fair elections. And the question of a fixed term, being able to have a certain term. The question of a financial reform. In other words, um, how do you go about financing elections? How do you go about controlling the paraphernalia, the undue influences um, the, on people in terms of their vote. So you these share, are matters that we you have to You share the blame for a lack of progress in this regard. Well, you know, you I, and Mr. Ingram have been um, uh, heading the Bahamas for 20 odd years. Well, uh, do you share, well, um, you share the blame for us well, not having that kind of progress? If, if, if you're going to give me 20 years, then Ingram has 15 of those 20. And so I, there was only so much I was able to do in the, in the five years that I had. And I, I really was satisfied. You know, Mr. Jones, one of the problems that I faced was I never took a day's vacation in the entire five-year period. And the only time I was off was when I was sick. And so and that in itself is something I must reform. I made a commitment to PLPs throughout this country that I have learnt from the mistakes of my government. I was a prime minister who sat around the table and knew every issue and every subject matter because I worked hard at it. So therefore I have a vision for the country, I have a grasp of the country, and I know I have a, a sacred responsibility to pass on the leadership of the PLP at the appropriate time, similar to the way Pinling passed it on to me. And so therefore that is a continuing obligation I have to secure the future of this country by the arm of the democracy that I'm the leader of. And so for me, moving forward, we are working now really in all the questions. We're working at, at, at finessing the plans we have and developing the vision even further because we know today, see all the talk we have about Ingram taking a cut. I mean, that, whoever his public relations man is, that's, you know, take 50, 20,000 of his salary, take 5,000 of mine, whatever he, he's doing, right? It's like sticking a finger in a dam and trying to hold the water back. It can't work that way. You need a government with the capacity to examine our country and come up with ideas, both economic and social, that will help this country. Yeah. And you know, we not, not look, you, you take health. As you and I sit here today in this country, yeah. I am deeply concerned about the quality yeah. of health care today. Yeah. Okay? About the lack of attention on health care about the common man going into the hospital knowing with certainty that he's going to be taken care of properly. And the Bahamian people really beset uh, with bad social and economic policies that have been in place for decades now. And um, many people are frustrated, Mr. Christie, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Davis, and Mr. Alkitas, that uh, politicians don't get it. Well, you may be, if, if, just let me say this, because he raised the question of urban renewal. You know, there is a tremendous responsibility on part of the people of a country to recognize what is good for them. And Bell and Melanie, who spoke to urban renewal, I, I sat down one day when I was suddenly exposed to conditions for the first time as a representative to my constituency in Farm Road. 
and I called the commissioner of police into my office. I said that I saw the Americans marveling why Castro could move 500,000 people in 48 hours in Cuba when a hurricane is coming. And I realized that it was a single command instruction. And so I asked the commissioner of police, are you prepared to arm urban renewal officers with senior police officers capable of making judgments on behalf of the country? And so when you give the command, that command is acted upon. There are no bureaucracy contradictions or conflicts, etc. So when they need to knock a house down, they knock it down. The Minister of Works is governed by an act where he has to give notice. When they need to move a car, they move the car in the interest of national security. And then we had the police performing the non-traditional services with the health workers, with the, the social workers, and people suddenly gained confidence in them. And this was the point. Suddenly a community was recognizing that the only way we could abate the crime problem is that they themselves assume the responsibility for it. And the senior police officers gaining their confidence was suddenly a part of the community. And as a result of that, we had the basis, Mr. Jones, of tracking these children into their schools. And that's why we put police officers in there. We didn't want to militarize the schools. We anticipated the same problems in the community would be repeated in the schools. So we knew just what happened at C.I. Gibson last week. The children were stabbed. We knew that would happen because we saw the weapons being taken from school children. And so why should should a prime minister come in or a government come in and not sit down and ask me if they didn't see it, if they didn't know it, ask the police officers who manned those urban renewal places what they were doing. We had a road scholar in charge of it. We had a psychiatrist, a chairman of it. We had Bahamians who were not political, but who understood that the Bahamas needed a paradigm shift on addressing social problems that would have results. So we were driven and had result-oriented or driven policies, and we, we, we had this sad situation of where they reversed it. So when you talk about going forward, we believe with the young men and women who will be joining us this time, we believe that we are going to be really equipped to, to meet the cynicism that exists in the Bahamian population. And we've seen this cynicism manifest itself throughout the world, where, where governments are being rejected. And we believe in the same way for the same reason. This government, the FNM government, will be rejected. But we believe, having been out here, knowing it, knowing what we did last time, and how we failed to communicate the good works we were doing, my goodness me, do you think I should be debating how that stadium got out there? That stadium came from here. In, when I sat with the president of China and said, I want us a gift, the stadium because I'd seen what they'd done in Caribbean countries. And then why did it take time? Because I kept on insisting I wanted a real stadium, right? One that is now being put in place with covering and so forth and so on. But again, that was my government's work. But we debate as to who's doing it as, as opposed to Ingram coming and saying, thank you very much, Mr. Christie, and moving on. And that's, I, my, my point to the Bahamian public is that as we look at our political system, okay. We must do so collectively um, as a political directorate. And secondly, our country is demanding real governance with vision. And I'm, I believe um, that if Ingram wanted to consult us, my goodness me, this is Hubert Ingram and Perry Christie. You ask whether it's our time to go? Well, obviously we are in the twilight of our political careers. And obviously you could see from my side, all around me, you could see my successors ready to go. And I'm going to facilitate that. But the country will have it done at the right time in the right way. Thank you so very much, Mr. Christie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alkidis. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you for watching and listening to this special program on governance in the Bahamas. We hope that we would be able to facilitate a discussion with the free national movement as well. I'm Wendell Jones. Good evening, everyone.